I think that might be it for me when it comes to 5e. And I doubt that 5.5 or 6e or whatever is coming next from Watsi is going to be the next game that I play. Greetings, mortals. I am a simple man with complex tastes, also known as Harrison Tarr. And today I am going to tell you the three main reasons why I'm done with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Before I get into my first reason, I just want to say, do you like actual play podcasts? Well, we here at Tabletop Sandbox have produced one. It is a Blades in the Dark actual play podcast where we play a group of chaotic scoundrels in the haunted Victorian electropunk city of Duskwall getting up to all sorts of shenanigans. You take care of those cheeky fuckers that are walking around outside. Uh, mm, they just ran off on their own. It's all right. Right, don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Canticle of the Crimson Wake, which you can check out on the Tabletop Sandbox podcast, which we will have linked below. The first episode will be available on Patreon September 28th, and it will be available everywhere else on October 3rd, except Apple Podcasts for... Uh, frustrating Aww. reasons. But if that's something that you think you'd be interested in, give it a listen. This is not going to be a video of me complaining about Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, BS, corporate greed, blah, 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 blah. That's been done, right? And those aren't really my complaints with 5e. I mean, they weren't really getting much of my money anyway. The last time I spent money on a 5e product was when I bought the digital version of Tasha's. So I could have those options for my character in a campaign I was playing, but anyway, these are complaints. Well, I, sh I say complaints. These are my personal qualms that I have with aspects of 5th edition D&D that are mostly based on the mechanics and the gameplay of the actual game. So I'm not here to shit on anyone and I am not planning to make a habit of doing that on this channel at any point. My first major reason is that D&D 5e, I have to specify that, because I don't mean all D&D, because uh, semantics, you know, people will get mad if I say D&D because OSR is D&D, even if it's not D&D brand, and you, you kind of, it's, it's a rabbit hole. If I just say D&D at any point in the video, you know that I mean 5th edition. My first main reason I'm done with D&D 5e is that it simultaneously has too many rules and not enough. The most robust aspect of D&D &D and what draws a lot of people to it and a lot of people's favorite part about it is combat, right? It is a tactical single player, and not single player, but single character war game, basically. That is what the most robust mechanics of the game are in relation to and that is one of the most fun aspects of this game that is at least tied intrinsically to the rules of the game itself. And it does that granted very gamified combat very well. However, 5e also tries to do a whole lot of other things. It tries to be survival simulation and also, I mean, have social encounters and then there's dungeon delving and wilderness exploration. All of those, except combat, in my opinion, have very underwhelming slash underdeveloped rule sets. They're they almost seem as afterthoughts to the main game, and really, it's not satisfying to play that. I mean, like, I think D&D 5e tried to please everyone and ended up pleasing no one fully, right? Because obviously it's the most popular role-playing game in the world, tabletop role-playing game at least. I don't know about video games. So a lot of people love it, but I think the reason a lot of people love it is that it's approachable, it's a big name, and they haven't been exposed to all or even just some of the other games that are out there that are a lot better or at the very least better suited to a specific type of game that they want to play because everywhere you see people homebrewing rules and adding entire rule sets and settings and you know twisting the game to fit their own personal version of what they want to play when really they could just be looking for the game that already exists that does this thing that they're trying to do all on their own pretty damn well. A timelessly useful piece of advice is that you should not half-ass a bunch of things, but instead whole-ass 
one thing. An example of a game that does this is the game that I've played most recently and maybe my favorite role-playing game. You can check out a video on it on this channel not too long ago. Blades in the Dark picked a lane and stuck with it. It is scoundrels pulling scores in this dismal, Victorian haunted, electropunk city. And it is very much like episodic in the way that the game is played. Like each session, if you play long enough sessions, will have a score and a downtime. And then the next session will be a score and a downtime. It is really well designed to do one thing. It can't run every type of game like 5e tries to, but what it does, it does really well. Another point in the D&D has, D&D 5e, has too many rules and yet not enough is that there are rules that are unrealistic in an unfun way. Obviously, you're not going to be able to develop a system that covers every possible eventuality, and even if you were able to develop a system like that, nobody would be able to play it. And there are definitely systems that are more robust and crunchy than D&D, but trying to do that, it, it's just impossible. And D&D tries a little bit too hard, which just ends up limiting people. Right? There are lots of articles and videos examining how realistic 5e is, and obviously it's not going to be very realistic. Like, can you drink a whole potion in the time it would take to be an action or a bonus action? Or is movement speed actually realistic? Is carrying capacity even somewhat realistic? The answer is no. <laughs> Would you be able to reach more than five feet with a standard longsword? Should you be able to wield a longsword with one hand? Is a flail an effective weapon? Why does it make sense that a greatsword does this much damage and a battle axe does this much damage? Where if you hit the right person in the right spot, then it, you know, blah, 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 blah. Obviously it's not going to be realistic. It is going to be gamey and gamified. And that's not the problem, or it shouldn't be. You shouldn't be making those critiques. What you should be asking is are the rules that are unrealistic for the benefit of the game and the fun of the players at the table, or are they a hindrance to that goal? There are a sizable amount of rules in 5e that are just irritating limitations. Like, I should be able to use Gust of Wind to propel myself backward underwater when I don't have swim speed, but the spell doesn't actually propel you backwards, and if you're playing rules as written, which my DM does, then that's not an option. But that's cool, right? I don't know. That's not a perfect example. That's just the one that popped into my head from my personal experience. But I find that D&D 5e is much more tabletop than it is role-playing game. There are so many more rules for the tabletop grid-based combat than there are for anything having to do with role-playing. Right? The only real role-playing rules, at least the ones that everybody standardly uses, are just skills. Just persuasion and deception and intimidation. Your charisma stat should not be the only thing that determines how good you are at social encounters in a role-playing game. Maybe that's just my personal take, but that's one of the things that I feel like is just desperately underdeveloped in this game, and I'm not a huge fan of that. If we're just hand-waving or just resolving some of the most complex and interesting parts of the game with a single role, that's not really that fun to me. The fun doesn't come from the game, at the very least. The mechanics don't encourage it or reinforce it or enable it. The fun you have is in spite of the underdeveloped mechanics. And then there are too many rules and that there is this robust combat system, but it takes forever and it's boring, and everybody is trying to fix it with their homebrews, right? If everybody, well, not everybody, but if there are as many people on the internet trying to offer fixes for your combat, then maybe it's not actually that good, or at least not that fun. And really, what's the difference? Oi! Shut up, I'm recording! Shh. Dog. Stop. Reason number two that I'm done with 5e is that the rules don't incentivize valued playstyles. This is kind of tied into my first point. In fact, all three of these are fairly interconnected. The goals that 
the rules of D&D drive you to are kill monsters, get loot, level up. And that is about it. That is almost never what your average fry... 5e 5e game looks like we focus on 5e as heroic fantasy slaying villains destroying swaths of monsters doing role-playing becoming heroes developing relationships with npcs these are things that are common in 5e games but are not at all incentivized by the mechanics. Another thing where the fun that you have playing this game is in spite of the rules, not because of them. And then there are more specific examples of why I don't like the playstyles that this game incentivizes, like this concept I have in my brain that I refer to as until the last breath, which is this idea that D&D characters are super effective and they are as effective at 100 hit points as they are at one hit point. It is not until they drop to zero hit points that they are rendered ineffective and at that point they are rendered completely ineffective until they receive even one point of healing and then they're right back up. I have an entire video about this but it just doesn't incentivize actual self-preservation in the characters, at least in my experience. And it's frustrating to me wanting to have the game feel like it has real stakes, right? Your character could die. But basically it makes death the only real defeat in this game that is entirely focused on the mechanics of tactical combat. I think that that is so limiting in the stories that you can tell because nobody is going to tuck their tail between their legs and run away and live to fight another day without feeling like they didn't win that session, right? You can't lose a fight and feel like you did okay in a game of 5e. And again, the role-playing mechanics are heinously underdeveloped and there is no incentive to role-play in the mechanics of 5e. There is no experience bonus. I mean, there is this vague idea that you should award XP for role-playing encounters, but like I said, heinously underdeveloped. And finally, my third, and it's really a lot of reasons, but my third main reason I'm done with 5e is that there are just a lot of rules I don't like. And rather than do the thing that everybody seems to be wanting to do and has since 5e dropped, I don't feel like I should have to fix them in order to play the game I want to play. I would much rather just find another game that is much more to my liking. To list just a few, I'm not a fan of death saves and hit points, as I mentioned before and in my other video. I'm not a fan of the fact that when you fail in D&D 5e, it is non-progressive. It doesn't move the story forward. And this is part of the reason that combat is such a slog, is that if you miss an attack or if you fail a saving throw, you just don't do it. You suffer the consequence or you don't do anything cool. And then I'm thinking of effects like paralysis or stun, where then if you failed that saving throw, then on your turn, you just don't get to do anything at all. And failures don't do anything. And this is even not in combat. Failures don't do anything to progress the story forward, which they really should. This one I might get some flack for, but I'm familiar with it and I do like d20s, but the d20 system really doesn't do all that much for me. Like, the only reason I like the d20 system is that it's easy to kind of have that scale of 1 to 20 in your head, though especially in 5e it's not actually a scale of 1 to 20, it's usually a scale of 10 to 30 because you're factoring in modifiers and like, like who rolls for a DC three or even a DC five or seven for that matter? Like if something's a DC eight, by the time you're level three, why do you even bother rolling for that, right? Because it just feels so cheap when you fail and it's like, well, I shouldn't have failed that, I just rolled like shit. I don't know, I've realized that I'm not that big of a fan of the D20 system, at least the way it's utilized in 5e, though I do like natural 20s and nat 1s. This one I'll probably get even more flack for because this isn't specific to 5e, it's specific to all things D&D and all things D&D adjacent. I'm personally not a huge fan of the six core attributes. And more specific to 5e, I'm not a huge fan of the skills. I don't think they cover everything well enough and I don't think that it's one of those things where it's 
too many rules and not enough. And the skills are not enough and also too much because they try to encompass everything, but they encompass everything badly and there should be overlap. I don't know. I'm just much more of a fan of the Blades in the Dark actions and attributes system more so than I am of these six core stats. I also don't like kind of the boxes that they have to put people in, right? Like if you want a character that's good at martial combat, they have to have a high strength score or a high dex score. And then that means that this character has to be big and strong or has to be really coordinated and live to be good at these things, which then means that they have to be stupid, right? Or unwise or have a poor constitution because you end up dumping a stat, right? And you could have a character concept that just isn't supported as a viable build in 5e. And kind of along these same lines, and I'm leaning a lot towards Blades in the Dark, obviously, it's the kick that I've been on. I'm not a huge fan of classes because of the way that they give you what you can do and nobody else can do that. Nobody else can attempt the things that your class can do. Those are specific to you abilities. And I favor highly over classes, playbooks that don't limit what you can do and tell you what you can do. They just give you extra cool stuff that make you cooler than everybody else who can attempt the same things that you can do. Like, I think if you have magic in your world, everybody should be able to attempt magic. It, like, it's not fun to not allow people to try magic, right? Everybody can cast a ritual or should be able to. And everybody can wield a magic wand because it's the wand that's magic, not the person. You know, you get what I'm saying. This is also just a personal take and I do get like rare magic users. I appreciate that, but I don't know. It's just, it's a, just another nitpick. So like I said, these are my qualms with D&D 5e, but in contradiction to how it may appear, I actually really like 5e and I've played it a lot and I've enjoyed almost all of my time playing it for many, many years. But at this point, I feel like I have developed my taste for tabletop role-playing games enough to know that 5e just isn't the one for me. If you're struggling to have fun, right? You're trying to make yourself have fun and it's only happening some of the time, then it is time to get out of that relationship. And that doesn't just apply to tabletop role-playing games. You can take that one to the bank. That's from personal experience. But that's the reason why I am really done with 5e. Not totally done. I will continue playing in the game of 5e that has been going for years that I'm a part of. But once that campaign is done, I think that might be it for me when it comes to 5e. And I doubt that 5.5 or 6C or whatever is coming next from WotC is going to be the next game that I play. Well, I hope this hasn't been too complainy, but it is the internet. I have to have hot takes to get reactions. And so comment your hot takes, whether they agree or disagree with me in the comments below. Like or dislike the video if you liked or disliked the video. And now you must excuse me. I'm off to buy a nuclear powered car that can turn into a jet with laser guided heat seeking missiles. Good night, mortals.